Welcome to Lesson 4 of the Python Turtle Graphics video tutorial series. In this lesson, you will learn how to program more efficiently using a fewer lines of code, you will learn to recognize patterns in code, and you will learn how to use the for loop. So what is looping? Looping is where the same piece of code is repeated many times. It works when there is a clear pattern in code. The code shown here should be familiar to you as it is used to draw a square. It has a clear pattern that the same two lines of code are repeated four times. If we use the technique of looping, we can get rid of three lines of this code. Let's jump into our program and see how this is done. First, let's test this program to ensure that it works. As you can see, it draws the square successfully. So, let's now add in our loop. This is called a for loop, and I will type in the command for i in range, open bracket, for close bracket, and colon. Anytime you come to a colon, the lines below it must be indented. To do this, I will select the two lines, go to the format menu, and select indent region. The default indent is four spaces or one tab on your keyboard if you need to enter this manually. So what does this line of code mean? The word for is telling Python the type of loop it is using. The letter i is actually a variable name. This could be any name so long as you remember the rules of naming variables. The word range with its brackets and the number four inside is actually a pre-programmed function in Python. It basically tells the program that it is going to count from numbers 0 to 3, which is actually four numbers in length. So what happens is that i stores the first number, which is 0. The turtle forward and turtle left commands are then run. The code goes back to the for loop and changes the value stored in i to 1. The code runs again. The loop then continues until the variable reaches the value 3. At this point, once the code has been run one final time, the loop ends. Let's look at this and see if it works by deleting the repeated lines and running the program. As you can see, the code works. Now, let's look at another benefit. Like we did in Lesson 3's video, we are going to add in some variables. First, I will add a variable called sides and set the value to 4. Now, in the range function, I will write sides so it picks out the data stored in this variable. Next, I will add a variable called distance and set this to 200. Again, this will be the distance the turtle travels forward and I will add this variable into the forward command. Finally, I will add the variable angle, which will contain the calculation to determine the angles of a shape, which is 360 divided by the number of sides. I will add this into the turtle.left command, then run the program to test to see if it works. And as you can see, it works perfectly. Now, if we want to modify this program, all we have to do is change the variables Let's have a look at this now. By changing the number of sides, I can create different shapes. So if I do a five-sided shape, I will end up with a pentagon with sides of 200 pixels in length. Remember, you can also change the distance. Have a play. Finally, let's have a look at what happens if we break the loop. So Outside of the loop, which is going back to the very left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to enter the command turtle.left5. I'm now going to copy and paste this for loop below this, and I will do it again, making sure that I keep the turtle.left5 command above it, and then we'll run this program and see what happens. Now, as you can see, it draws the first shape, and then does a second and a third, each one slightly offset from the previous one. Time for this video's challenge. 
The code shown on the screen draws three pentagons, which are shown in the top right of the screen here. Some of the code is repeated. Using the skills you learned today, we want you to try and draw the ship at the bottom right of the screen using no repetitive code at all. Have a go, see what you can do. Pause the video now and resume when you want to see the solution. For this solution, we start off by creating a new variable called circles, which is equal to 72. This number is derived by the fact that there's 360 degrees in a circle, and we've divided 360 by the angle in which we're turning left after we've drawn a single pentagon. So 360 divided by 5 is equal to 72. Now, also notice that there are now two loops. Our original loop is here and sits inside another loop, which I'm going to call circle for the time being, which basically repeats our single pentagon 72 times. Have a play with this and see if you can fathom out how it is working. We also have this solution, which is the advanced solution. The problem is, with the basic solution, it's calculating how many times to repeat the pentagon so we get a complete circle. What we're going to do here then is we're going to do 360 degrees divided by the actual turn angle and you'll notice that I've added another variable called turn angle which is equal to 5. The problem however is that we're going to use the variable circles in our range function. Whenever you do a division Python will save the data as a decimal and range cannot accept a decimal. So we have to convert the calculation 360 degrees by the angle into an integer which we do use in the int open bracket close bracket function as shown here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.